Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I talk to a photographer, a photographer who became a documentarian photographer. It kind of just became the voice they grew into, the voice that they discovered when they started taking pictures. And the way they started learning about photography is amazing because they only started maybe eight years back, I think, and they just met people along the way that said, you should do this, you should do this, and he did. And it was it's a great story, and then the whole thing turned into a book, but a book that spoke a message of experiences during a time that things were happening. It's it's and it's a good book. It's a everything about it is is really cool. It looks great. I, I don't know why I'm explaining it to you. You can go check it out after you're done listening to this episode. But it's a great person to talk to. We go off on a tangent about Prince for about <laughs> and I mean Prince the artist, not like Prince like making prints. The we and that was fun. We actually had to wrangle it back in because we could have talked about Prince the entire episode. But it's a fun conversation. I was really glad to meet the person. So here it is, starting right now. Hey, my name is Kamal X, and I'm a documentary photographer based out of Brooklyn, New York, with a book that just has been released entitled "Black Astronaut: The Stars Belong to the People." So. You are a documentary photographer, you say, and yes. So how how does one do that? How is it? You is document. It just, you document. Is it just? <laughs> is it a style? Is it a? I, I guess that's what I'm asking. Like, if you're an artist, you can say I'm, a, yeah. I'm an abstract artist. Like, is it just kind of the name of it? It's not like a. It, it's not like somebody hired. You. Well, no, I guess people do. Hire. How, what am I trying to say? How? What does documentary <laughs> photographer mean? Tell me that. Yeah, and I think, and to be honest, I'm sure it means different things to different people. For yeah. me, I look at it just the same as like watching a documentary when you know a filmmaker comes and they're just following what's actually happening. You're not necessarily manipulating the scene. You're just documenting what's actually happening, okay. and you're sharing it with the world. There's no like you know getting a model to do this and that you know and um that's my definition of documentary is photography yeah. it's just being someone that's looking for real life and just trying to show some so you know express these moments and share these moments that you get just ex investigating and being curious that's yeah. what i would say well and because mm -hmm. i do love documentaries i do actually mm -hmm. when i'm looking for movies and stuff like that i will seek out something where it's like oh here's a documentary about this person that i find interesting or about this subject like documentary and i don't know why i'm explaining the concept of documentaries but maybe it's to get to the meat of what i'm really trying to explain that i'm asking is yeah you know because documentary can be explaining something after the fact or it can be kind of like how vlogs are sort of documentaries where it's someone going here's what i'm mm. doing every minute of the day like yeah wh which one it's would you say you lean more towards I lean towards more of the like investigative kind of journalism okay. type of vibe. Yeah. That's where I'm kind of, I kind of go with it. And, um, and also I do give myself some freedom in that too, because in my books, I also will do a photo shoot and add that within my, my, uh, projects, which is something I think is just my style, you know? So if I had to put a label on it, it's probably no label that exists except photographer, yeah. creator, but I, I lean towards, you know, finding a topic that I'm interested in and like, you know, making the decision to investigate, go in, meet people, connect with people, take chances, risk, say hello, uh -huh. you know, like whatever question that I'm trying to get answered, um, I normally just go towards that in a very real way because I, I get more moved when something is more personal for me. And that's personal for me. Because I'm not saying photo shoots aren't personal, because those are personal also. Right, yeah. But for me, it's like I find I find out things that kind of move me. And to be honest, also, you know, because when you say the word documentary, mm -hmm. I think of real world. So I don't know yeah. if you grew up listening, like watching MTV's Real World. That was my show growing up. So this is yeah. when, um, you know, uh, what do you call that? That kind of television. What is that called? Reality like, TV. Yeah. Reality TV first started. And I remember being a kid, like 11 years old, nine years old, mm -hmm. watching this, like glued to it because it was so interesting because it back then it was real. Mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of times when I think about how my career kind of like 
when I picked up the camera, how I gravitated towards these real stories. I wonder how much of an influence that show had on me because it was like, wow, you get to see all these people that you would never meet in real life from places I've never been. And you're like seeing how they think, what they, how they look, how they dress. And it was just like, wow, there's a bigger world out there coming from North New Jersey. Yeah. So I think that might be a big reason why I kind of lean towards finding interesting new stories that are kind of based on reality. Okay. Yeah. And so you say that was an inspiration for it growing up, but when did you actually start going or realize when you were taking pictures and stuff that that was what you were going to gravitate towards or that's what you were going to start doing? Like, how did that come about mm. that it actually went in that direction? Yeah, it was a kind of interesting thing because it kind of like, it seemed like I've always had a love for like when I was growing up, my stepdad used to take me to movies all the time. That was one of the one of the few things that we did. You know, he loved going to movies, which I appreciate because it, you know, it helped me, I think. Yeah. So just always being in cinema, um, always talking about the movies afterwards, not too deep, but just enough to right. like, get the curiosity going. Um, so throughout the years, I've always been crazy about movies, watching movies, movies. And then around like I want to say 20, I'm 37 now. So let's say around like 31 30 i picked up a camera while i was traveling you and the just reason started why, at around 31 yeah, yeah i'm not okay yeah. all right yeah so um i pick up a camera while i was traveling i was in south america i was in colombia either colombia or ecuador and i had a, a iphone 4s i met this cool uh couple and they were real photographers. I remember she had a Canon 6D and we were like sleeping on a volcano that night, which is like amazing. <laughs> and then, um, and, yeah. And then, this and whole then story she, sounds made up so far, but continue. So it was life changing <laughs> stuff, man. And then um, I remember I took a picture with my 4S and then she showed me hers with the actual full frame DSLR. And she said, look at the difference. And I immediately said, okay, mm -hmm. I need to get a real camera. So I remember I bought one on Amazon and it took like, three weeks or two weeks and it was a very expensive because of the the shipping cost and the pickup tax and all that stuff and i picked yeah. it up in brazil i think and it started from there you know so and it did and it wasn't obviously i was just doing it because i was traveling and i just wanted to like you know take better pictures to post on instagram you mm -hmm. know and it kind of evolved into this way of expressing myself because at the same time i was really trying to find myself and I was on it. That whole trip was about finding my peace, dealing with grief, dealing with, you know, the loss of a best friend. That was the reason why I started traveling. I lost oh, my really? best friend. Yeah. And I went for, you know, I started just traveling the world. I dropped everything. I saved up money. I came home when I needed to. And I went right back out there because in my mind, I was like, I'm no good to the world if I'm no good for me, you know, like, hmm. and after you lose someone in that way to cancer, and it was not something that we knew was happening. And at that age, you don't understand what stages mean. You just assume they're going to be okay. That's what I did anyway. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so for that to kind of just be like that, just everything just changing that in one day like that, my whole life being flipped upside down, I said, I need to go. I need to go and fit, find me. I need to do what I got to do. So I say that to say, as I was finding myself and dealing with the grief and dealing with finding peace and all that stuff, I also was using the camera as an outlet. So it kind of like me growing up, always watching movies, now having this moment of trying to figure me out, having one tool as I'm traveling, it kind of like roads kind of cross in a great way, I think. And it's brought me to where I am today. Okay. And yeah. in doing that, is there a way that you went about with these uh, with these pictures you were taking while you were traveling because as you said you're i mean you're a traveling documentary photographer how did mm. you find the voice that you were looking for in these different environments or how did you it's is there a different way yeah. that you go about it for each project or each location I that you go to saying. so yeah in the beginning so the first book i did was called a quest supreme okay. um and that was that and that was based on me losing my friend and finding myself and that was five years of traveling internationally to over 40 countries. And, you know, that took a lot of me. And I honestly, the beautiful thing about that project was I was learning photography as I was doing it. Like mm. it, it was very raw. I didn't go to school. I didn't, you know, it was just me watching YouTube videos in random countries, learning on the fly, trying to figure it out. And I, and I slow, and then, you know, I'm taking breaks. So I'm coming back home. I'm staying with my mom. I'm, 
saving money and then I'm going back out into the world. So there are moments of, you know, months of time where I'm back settled and I have some time to really learn more and get, get some knowledge. And yeah. then I'm like, okay, I'm getting more of an understanding of what I'm trying to do for this project. And I think it was just cool because it was like, I, I gave myself the freedom to just try it out. Because yeah. at that point, I didn't even know it was documentary photography. I was just drawn to what I was drawn to. And then it kind of like a quest supreme kind of like happened naturally. So like you're saying you like was, discovered yeah. it as you were going along. You discovered that's what you were doing. Yeah. Like I didn't oh. have like, okay, we're going to be a documentary. It was just kind of like, gotcha. oh, this is what I'm doing. I'm looking at like my photos. And then I realized I was like, I had people seeing my photos and when they were like, yo, I think you're an artist. And I'm like, huh? No, I'm just doing this for Instagram. What are you? What are you talking about? It's like, no, you really, this is powerful. Then I would post certain photos and it would get a lot of feedback from people saying, yo, you need to take this seriously, bro. This isn't just normal, you know, picture in front of the Eiffel Tower. Here you go. This is like, you're you're actually saying something. I'm feeling something. Huh. Yeah. So that, that kind of like, it's been a natural process, which I'm thankful for because my personality doesn't do well with boxes. So yeah. the fact that I kind of gave, I kind of went outside to come into the industry, I would say helped me because I feel like I have my voice versus if I was starting out trying to like figure it out, I don't know. I feel like it might have been limiting for me. Like I, I would have been trying to be something versus just being what I am. Yeah. And I love yeah. the fact that one was you were taking pictures, you saw somebody who was just like, hey, look at what it looks like this way. And you're yeah. like, oh, okay. And then other people are telling you as you're posting them, like going, Hey, do more that you can do more. This is you're wasting your, not wasting your time, but you know, like do more than this. You can, we want to see more. Yeah. And you're like, okay. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm kind of like, All right. You, you like that? Really? You know, like, yeah. And you know, to be honest with you, that's one of the more interesting things of life for me personally. I think there's everyone can kind of relate to this. Yeah. There's things that we do well are things that we do that I think are exceptional or whatever word you want to put yeah. that we think because it's more natural to us, we go, oh, this isn't that special. I'm just being me. But you don't sometimes we don't understand how different we are and what we do or how our voice is connected to certain things that we're doing that we might think nothing of. Yeah. But the world may feel like, yo, no, I, I need more of that. So it was kind of like a wake up call in, in a sense. Like I needed that feedback to get me to kind of allow myself to accept, hey, maybe this isn't everybody can do this. Maybe you are. This is a gift and you need to like take it seriously instead of like, you know, playing with it, so to speak. Yeah. What I like too is, um, and not a lot of people, but some people when I've spoken to them have told me this. I like that you're like, I was traveling and then wanting to learn how to do something. And I looked it up on YouTube and it's like, yeah, <laughs> someone else who does what I do. You know, yeah. I dig that. <laughs> right. That's the man. It's the YouTube is man. You can learn anything. I know. It's, it's and like, it's, it's unbelievable. There's nothing like I told you. I mean, we've been talking a little bit before I can tell, you know, the first thing that I wanted, well, the next thing I want to do is get into film yeah. and, you know, I've been searching I'm getting so much information. It's like the same process, just like how I learned photography. It's like, you can learn it. You have to go into the real world with these things though and like try and like put yourself out there. But in terms of at least getting to the point where you can you know what you need to know to mm -hmm. get certain, some of the bases filled at least, you know, like it's a very, very powerful tool. Like very, you know. Well, and on top of that, there's one more aspect you have to think of. Well, actually several more aspects than, than yeah. taking a picture. Not that taking a picture is just, you go boop, you know, and you're done. <laughs> of course, there's more preparation than that. Uh, but with film, I mean, then you're talking, there's going to be audio involved. There's going to be... Yeah actual so subjects possibly you know and other mm. things so what what would you say is something that would be i guess a hurdle from going from being a photographer to uh, being to the biggest, making film mm, the biggest thing right now that i'm learning that i'm that where i'm at right now is the writing process figuring out like how you know coming up with treatments coming up with scripts yeah. screenwriting all that stuff like understanding that is probably where i feel like the biggest hurdle for me right now is that's what i'm at least paying most attention to mm -hmm. um but there's also there's beautiful things about i think trying other uh other things in media help you in ways you can never know like stanley kubrick is my guy right he's mm -hmm. one of the greatest photographers of, not photographer directors of all time and he was a photographer before he got into directing so if oh, you really look at yeah so if you look at a lot of like the way he tells stories it's like you can see 
it's it's a little different because he has that photography background. Um, with me, with becoming a photographer, because I'm not sure if you're familiar, but learning aperture, pro- all that stuff, like the shutter and all that stuff, yeah. ISO, it is difficult. It's like an instrument. Like It's like mm-hmm. to, to get out a manual and really be on the fly and be able to do all that. It takes time and energy. Um, but I was a DJ. Okay. So being a DJ allowed, I had to learn similar things. You got to learn all those switches and buttons. And I think that was like a great precursor. So when I got into the camera, it was like I, my brain was already kind of okay, this is what we do. Mm-hmm. Similar with, we're doing podcasts right now. I've had a podcast. So you think about sound, mm-hmm. lighting, video, like, and I think I'm hoping, hoping, fingers crossed, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like when I get into the next level, these little things will help me in terms of understanding the importance of it, what it needs to sound like. So I think there's like these little, I, I look at it like um Karate Kid, <laughs> like when he's like wax on wax off okay. you know like you know like i was curious like, where that was know, gonna go <laughs> yeah you don't know that you're doing the like you're doing right it. you just think it's like you don't realize how these little pieces can be a part of something uh a bigger part of your journey anyway yeah and i think we're all you know for me anyway so yeah i think the writing part is definitely going to be the thing and i think i just need to see it and understand it and then i can go and then practice obviously That is very much something I've learned. There are certain aspects of certain things that uh, even I do that bleed over into other things that I do. And one Mm. of them I found out is editing. I actually Mm. have, I I didn't know this originally, but my forte is editing things and making them when it comes to say videos or doing the podcast. I used to edit the heck out of this podcast, like really, (laughs) really to the point where I was doing it like it was an an NPR show that I was getting paid for. (laughs) And I'm like, I don't need to do that. So what I realized Mm. is I just need to edit myself. I need to make sure Mm. that I'm more organized. So I did that. Mm. And on top Mm. of it, I started making shorts of that shorts of the videos into shorts for YouTube. And then I learned that, Oh, the attention span when people are just looking at a video is different than oh, someone who's wow. sitting back and taking in a podcast. Yeah. So you had to yeah. make the quick, like, make the point in like 15 mm-hmm. seconds, even though it was a five minute conversation, things mm-hmm. like that. And then on top of it, I also do music and I've learned how to, you know, mm-hmm. edit from, hey, this part's too long. You need to go to the chorus quicker or there needs to be a bridge here because it just abruptly changes, just things like that. Wow. So I've learned, That's yeah, beautiful. yeah, I've learned yeah. more about editing and it actually all applies to the stuff that I do across the board. And that's kind of what you're saying is you're looking to see which part will kind of uh, complement the next. And also yeah, the transition from you have the camera and it's probably got motion built in. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So right, you already right. know how it works. So There's how can you use it for something place. else, you know? Yeah. You know, something interesting. Um, I try to bring up Prince in every interview I do. Oh, That's nice. my guy. I'm, Sorry, Prince Do it. No, guy. go right so, ahead. Yeah, I got it. So I was talking to a gentleman at a wedding a couple weeks ago. He was a musician. And we were talking about Prince. And he, this gentleman can play all. He can play, like, a lot of instruments. Yeah. Prince, if if people I really know, he can. Prince, like, his first few albums, he played all the instruments on the album. Like, he's mm-hmm. a different level of genius musically, right? And I was talking to this gentleman at the wedding about it. Like, I was like, wow, so you can play a bunch of instruments like Prince does. He's like, yeah. So I'm asking, him, like, how is that possible? Like, how do you get to learn all these things? And he explained, it's like, and I hope I'm getting this correct. But he's like, there's seven chords. Mm-hmm. And like, all instruments have seven chords. Once you understand that, and you, it helps you, like, once you get that seven thing down, it helps you, like, bridge the gap between everything. But you got to first learn those seven chords mm-hmm. and then it allows you to like stretch and and do different things and I, and I feel like um I'm not a musician <laughs> but I feel like um in terms of media and uh visual creativity and I think that's what we're both saying I think we probably are playing chords in our own way mm-hmm. you know and it's a beautiful thing how things can like blossom if you allow yourself to be open to just trying new things. That's the beautiful thing I love about all this YouTube and Mm -hmm. podcasts and, you know, picking up a camera. It's just beautiful how you can surprise yourself. And like, there's no limits as to what you can create if you're just willing to try, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, to bring up Prince too, because I did a few years back, I think it was the year before the pandemic, uh, I did the Paisley Mm -hmm. Park tour because they were allowing people in. I went to it. It was fantastic. And speaking of what you're talking Mm -hmm. about, one of the things I learned from Prince is 
You know, you think of making an album. I mean, first of all, with what you were talking about, you learn those seven, squir- seven chords. It also helps to have a ridiculous amount of talent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not just that, but it's like... <laughs> but I, I got to go into the studio... And what I realized, you think of people doing the music and it's like, oh, he's got his own studio and he's got the big room there. And what they pointed Mm -hmm. out was there was the room with the board where you record the stuff and you have the master control and that's where Prince would be. And there was this Mm -hmm. big, long microphone that went Mm -hmm. into the room that was right by the mixing board. And they're like, and that's where he'd sit while he was working on stuff, playing guitar, or he'd turn and use the keyboards and he'd record his vocals. And I'm like... Oh, yeah. He doesn't need this other room. This is if he brings people in. And it was a whole thing. Like, he just sat there like I am and Mm -hmm. didn't have to stand up and go, okay, I'm going to go over to the booth and record vocals now. He's like, no, I just do it right here. And and it's like, duh. But you picture it like he's in the studio and doing all this stuff and running around playing. No, he's just sitting down and goofing around and going, boo boo doo. Is that good? You know? All night in his house, just chilling in his own home, just has (laughs) full. Full studio. Yeah. Um, and you know what's interesting that we're talking about. I mean, I obviously like to bring Prince up, but yeah, I'm there you for know, it. Black Astronaut, the book is based, it's you know, with George Floyd and all that stuff happened, which is what the book is, you know, spawned, not spawned, what sparked the book. Yeah. Um, was in Minnesota. So I got to go to oh, the um Place yeah. Park also when I was there to shoot the verdict. Because I was there for the verdict, it's in the book, and I was outside the courthouse. And the next, I think a couple of days after that is when I actually had some time and I went to see Paisley Park. And I, again, I saw exactly what you saw. And it was yeah. just such a beautiful, eye-opening experience. And Minnesota is a, a cool place, too. Mm-hmm. Like, it's actually, I actually really, really enjoyed it. Actually, like, I was surprised how cool it is. Yeah. Yeah. I And the... uh I like so they made you check your phone at the door and everything. I love that too. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You had, you had to put it in the yeah, Ziploc yeah, bag. Yeah, and I'm like, I wish, <laughs> I wish, I, I wish. I think I'm gonna go back honestly because I want to do like the more expensive tour because I wasn't. I didn't when know I there was a more tour, expensive tour. Yeah, there's a more expensive <laughs> one. So like when I went at that point, I was a, I was into Prince, but I wasn't where I'm at now. Like yeah. I got really into his music. I want to say two years ago, I went like a deep, deep dive, like really started studying and really, you know, got to this point. So now I want to go back as a real fan, you know, and, you know, really see that stuff again, because he's been a great inspiration for my career in photography, honestly, in like a lot of ways. Yeah. All right. One more tangent thing about Prince, and then we're (laughs) going to start talking about your book. So I I knew a band back in the uh, 90s that actually mm-hmm. recorded in Paisley Park. And they are, which Whoa. again, we said was his home. So, but he would Why, rent yeah, it out yeah. as a recording studio. Mm-hmm. So they were there, they never met him, but they would, Whoa. at times, they were not allowed to exit the recording studio because he was in the area or he was getting something oh. or he was walking through. <laughs> so they'd have to sit there. And they said they would just hear boots walking, you know, the, the high heel boots <laughs> click, walking click, on, click. The, on the wooden floor. <laughs> And yeah. then another time there was a story they said where um, there was a, a, a little station where you could make coffee and tea and stuff. And mm-hmm. um, someone came in and they go, um, guys, someone used Prince's honey for their tea. <laughs> and, uh, but, yeah, and basically told them you can't do that. <laughs> Don't use Prince's honey. Don't touch the honey, man. Don't touch the honey, man. Yeah. I can so, see him being that way, too. That's uh, that's amazing. That's a great experience. It's fantastic. Too. Oh, I know. Yeah. So, so anyway, amazing. so that's OK. Now let's talk more about you. Um, so the book, I do want to know about the book. Tell uh, tell us about the uh, book that you had released. OK. Yeah. So Black Astronaut, The Stars Belong to the People is out now available on Amazon. And it's based on I was living in Oakland at the time, you know, and when George Floyd was murdered and we all were, you know, seen that that situation and we all were heartbroken um for me i it's been so many times throughout my life where things like that would happen and i had nothing i can do but be angry sad but in this rare occasion i actually had a tool which is a camera so it was a di- it was like wow you can do something like you don't have to just sit back and when i was looking at a lot of the photos that were being shared and the the way it was being reported i felt like i don't know if this is really what's happening outside like it felt like it was very sensational all about burning cars and you know i just was like i think there's more to the story um so i i said i'm going to go outside now i was extremely afraid of covid covid mm. i was one of those people that was on the level of i didn't t- talk to nobody i would you know wash everything down extremely mm-hmm. paranoid because i was overweight at that time 
I'm 6'5", overweight. I just feel like I'm not the person that needs to be playing with getting sick at that time. Mm -hmm. And... But when it happened, I was like, I, I was like a calling, I, like not a calling, but a call. Like it was like, this is your opportunity. What are you gonna do? And I was like, okay, I'm gonna go. And then in my mind, I'm like, y y this could go bad for you. But it was like I did. The story needed to be told, and I felt like I needed to make sure my voice was a part of this because I didn't want. I feel like there was more going on than what was being reported. And when I stepped out, you know, I had all this protective gear on. I had visors. I had long sleeve. I had gloves. You know, mm -hmm. like. And I'm in people's faces, people are yelling and all this other stuff. So I'm really in it, you know? Yeah. And I later on, I started to realize, like, with the with my fear of the air, in a lot of ways, I felt like I was an astronaut. Like, I felt like oh. I was, like, if you think of an astronaut, what an astronaut does with the suit, they go into unfamiliar places on a mission. You know, everything around them can be harmful, but they have to, like, that keeps them safe. And so I felt like I was kind of, like, on a, my own mission. America didn't, was... I could not recognize America when I went outside those doors. Like everything that was going on from the fighting to the to the burning cars and all that. It was just mm -hmm. like, what is ha what what happened to the place I knew before 2020? Um so it started there mm -hmm. and it kind of evolved beyond like I told you I was in Minnesota for the verdict. And I remember at that point, I was like, Well, is, is this it? Or are you gonna keep shooting? And I was like, No, I feel like America is saying more than just this i feel like there's way more going on in the story and i kept shooting it went to the um the political the the presidential campaign and all that stuff that was going on it went to the women's rights things that are a little bit more recent mm -hmm. um the the vaccine debate anti or not you know so it went into a lot of realms of what i think well what i experienced going outside and i had a good a couple of good conversations with photographers that were like, well, how are you going to make this make sense? Like, you know, you're, you're doing all these different topics, but like, you know, how do we make it? And I was like, well, I'm going to make it about what I saw. It's not about, you know, just reporting and say, here, here you go. It's like, mm. I'm giving you what my experience was in those three years of shooting. So I'm going to call it something Black Astronaut. So it's more about my visual and getting my story. And I had to really lean into the writing and a lot of vulnerability, honestly, which I'm actually proud of. Um, yeah. So that's Black Astronaut. Yeah. So it was more a your experience because those things did happen all within a period of time, one after the other. So you yeah. weren't just picking one. You were showing because, I mean, that's the way we all experienced. It was just like one day mm -hmm. it would be like, and then this is happening, you know? Yeah. And and that's because I was gonna be going to say, I did see some of the things in there that did look like they were different subjects and I wasn't sure. Yeah. Okay, and yeah, that makes it, a lot more sense more now that you sense. say that. Yeah. yeah, it makes once you see the book and the way the writing and the the way the chapters are separated, it makes complete sense. So, but um, you know, I did that purposely, and I also wanted to take a chance on you know being an individual and being honest about who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, which I think in art today is something that with algorithms and all these things saying do it this way, this is the way you do it, and it's like, right. but sometimes our voice doesn't cooperate with that. And sometimes we have something to say that doesn't fit into algorithms. And I purposely wanted to make something that felt like me yeah. and not something that was, you know, fit the mold of, okay, America in crisis, just make this a Black Lives Matter book and you'll be okay. And it's like, that's not what I want to do, though. That's mm -hmm. not what I want to do. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. So, yeah, I wanted to really lean into just being honest because I think that's another part of the discussion of artistry because I think with social media, and the pressures of fitting in and so for so many different reasons, I think a lot of voices are starting to get like, I don't want to say dimmed down, but I'm seeing less of honesty of being independent in thought in yeah. terms of creation. Um, it's harder to find things that I feel something from. It's like, okay, oh, that was all right. Okay. That was all right. Yeah, that was all right. But finding something like, okay, I'm getting to know somebody now. You're telling right. me your truth. Now I'm getting into the story. Like, I know you. I feel like I know you from that. And that's what I look for. So I wanted to create something that gave that opportunity also to the viewer. And when you were done with this, how mm -hmm. did you... Uh, it's one thing to take these photos and maybe present them in a gallery or mm -hmm. uh, on a website or on, you know, say your Instagram social media posts and start a movement and create the voice and showing the timeline. How did you mm -hmm. piece this together and make it cohesive as a book, first of all? 
Um, a lot, big storyboard. Um, really? I had, okay. Again, movies, man. Like you gotta. It's and Stanley Kubrick. It, there's a lot of like uh, influences that I've gotten over the years, and just again watching so many movies, trying to yeah. make sense of things, being abstract but having it still make some sense, you know. Mm-hmm. And I just, you know, it. It's when you're being honest and you're really leaning into yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, and you're just and you're and you're sharing the words and you're and the emotions are in the photos. You feel it. Um, I I think it just it translates. And I've actually been getting a lot of great feedback, which is the great thing because I don't know, like as an artist when you're you know you're in the lab so to speak in terms of like you're creating you're creating you're not necessarily well, for me anyway. I'm not thinking a lot about like the feedback and what people are going to think. I'm thinking more about what do I like? Does it make sense to me? Will mm-hmm. I be proud of this when it's done? You know. And so now to finally have it out and just be getting so much love and so many, you know, moments with people in real life through email and just saying how much the impact the book has had. It's like, wow, like it's actually making like, to be honest with you, I'm like, this is a little abstract. I'm like, I don't know if they're going to get it completely. I get it. (laughs) But, you know, people have been like, no, I get it, man. I get it. You know, I'm an astronaut, too. Like, you know, so it's like it's been doing really, really well. So I'm really um, thankful, thankful and proud for real. Yeah. Yeah. And did you self-publish it? No, I got published with which was a a very great journey getting published um, because this is the first the first book was self-published, The Quest Supreme. And that one did really, really well. Um, but I definitely challenged myself to get a traditional publishing situation because okay. I, I just, that was a dream of mine. I just always wanted to have it happen. So, um, I got published with carpet bombing culture in the UK. Um, really? The, okay. Gary, yeah. Gary's really, really cool. Great situation. I got a couple of offers. Well, let me say a couple of yeses that came with offers is a better way of putting that. And they made the best one that made the most sense. He was the most personal too. So I was like, I'm going with this situation. So it's been really good. The the design and everything is all me. I did the whole, like, you know, he let me do what I had to do, you know? So hmm. I feel really good about the situation, but it was, um, it's been, and it's been a great learning experience too. Like yeah. just seeing what it's like to work with a publisher and all the things that come with it. It's been really great. How did you find them? Like, how do you even go about finding a publisher for photography uh, books? So my way was I went to like Barnes and Noble. Yeah. I went to all bu- bookstores basically and, and fished out any photography book that seemed like it was something similar to mine, like all something right. in terms of the subject matter, the look of it, the feel of the book, like what the pictures actually look like. And I would then, you know, take a picture of the publisher, you know, then go to their website. And the same thing I would do online. I would just look for photography books on Amazon or whatever, anything that seemed like it would fit what I was trying to do. And then look up the publisher, do all my research. And then I would create a proposal, send it out. I I probably sent out over maybe 80 to 100 proposals. And I got I got a good amount of yeses. I'll just say it like that. And yeah. A lot of no no responses, which is normal. That is completely normal. And then there's some, you know, and, and some that were like, "Oh, this is a legitimate. I like this." You know, so I, it, I think the, I think the proposal is the thing that I think is a big part of it, though. Like mm-hmm. making sure you really put effort into the way you explain and coming up with something unique, something that makes them go, "Oh, something that just doesn't seem boring." Basically, like. Find a way to be exciting if it's the, and, and that's what I kind of leaned into. And I had other photographers that are OGs, meaning like, you know, like people that are like s- solidified have been like, they're, I, I hope to be where they are. Yeah. And they even questioned me on my decision to call it Black Astronaut. And there was something like, you sure you want to do that? I was like, I'm going to do it, you know? And that was yeah. the thing I think that really opened a lot of doors for me, to be honest, being different, being, well, just being myself anyway. Right. You know? Yeah. yeah. How long did it take for you to actually do this? I guess, I guess you know, it, it, when when you send this stuff out, like, does it take a year? Well, I guess it's different uh, for everyone, yeah. but how, so how, how long the, did it take you? So the thing is that I, what I did also is I completed the book before I even sent out proposals. So I did oh, the yeah. entire book. I, I designed it already. So there was no... Like here, this is, I, and I was like, I can send you a physical copy if you want one too. Like I was ready, like I was just ready for whatever. Like it's you know, actually like, probably really think, smart. <laughs> yeah, because I think it also shows a sense of independence, and you got, you know, you're not expecting them to do a bunch for you. You're ready, you know. So I came at them that way. I want to. F- I feel like between the yes and to the 24th of October when it got released, mm-hmm. 
I want to say about eight months, eight to nine months, I would say. Okay. And that's quick. That's quick. Yeah. And that's because when he when he got it, when we made the agreement, he was like, I want to get this out soon. We're going to have to hustle. We're going to have to, you know, it, it was a big thing. And I was like, okay, let's go. Let's do it. And I was ready to roll. And, and that's why, again, it was a lot of a big learning experience in so many ways of just because it was like, let's go. Let's do this. Let's get this. Let's get that. Let's get yeah. that. And it was like, oh, wow. 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 But you got to be ready to roll. You got to be ready to roll for sure. Yeah. And with the website that you have, which also the book shows where it's for sale, which of course is very handy. Um, <laughs> how, how long have you had the website? When did you start making that? When did you realize I need to have a website, a home for what uh, I do? I am KamalX.com. Um, that was during the pandemic. That was one of my okay. first little projects. Once we was unlocked, I was like, I've been trying to do a podcast, not a podcast, a website for so long. Yeah. And obviously we had nothing to do. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I got, let's find projects. So and you're one of the I few keep... people that actually did what he said he was going to do during the, yeah, <laughs> during I, the I shutdown. Had to, I, was, I was in Oakland by myself. I just moved to Oakland four months before the pandemic hit. So mm -hmm. I didn't have a lot of friends and stuff to like hang out with. My family was in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I had to stay busy because I had no distractions, you know, and there was nothing I could really do. So it was like, let's be constructive. And it helped. It was really good for me. Um, cause also that a quest Supreme, my first book, I also finished that during the pa like pandemic, like yeah. the pandemic for me, it was tough though. Don't get it horrible oh, situation, no. but we, it, we it, all um, know we like to look back on it and go, <laughs> there was some good things, right? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. So I think it, <laughs> it set me down in a way and helped me focus on some things I've been pushing to the side. And now I just, I'm totally 100% committed and focused now on these things. Right. And before the pandemic, I was probably still a little, uh, you know, just mm -hmm. a little not going all the way. But now I'm I'm really happy where I'm at today. Yeah. And and of course, you said you were one of the people that was very protective during during mm -hmm. the pandemic. So I get that. That you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. the, uh, what, what are some of the plans that you have going forward now that the book is out? Like, are there different types of promotions or things that you're doing to get the word out about your work? Yeah. So I'm doing like, I've been doing some art shows like I, and I actually really? have one. Yeah. I'm having, I just had one in San Francisco, um, for one eleven Mina gallery. They, they're great friends. Like at this point, they're friends. Like they're just great yeah. people. They had like their 30th anniversary and they allowed me to be one of the, um, how do you say I was in the exhibit basically and I had like my own section for the book and you know to talk to people and sell the book and it was a great help. Um I'm having two events this next weekend, one in New York and one in New Jersey. One is a, called the Black wow. the Black Astronaut Experience which is going to be an art exhibit along with the conversation about the concept of being an astronaut as it relates to finding your dreams, facing your fears, being on a mission. You know, and then the other one is just a, a book, book launch but I'll also be selling, you know, books at that event too so lots of kind of between you know podcasting and events um that's kind of been what i've been focusing on and moving forward i'm going to start focusing more on galleries and i, I really liked working with galleries that was really i fun. could see that yeah. yeah so i think that's the next thing the next piece of the puzzle and then obviously you know getting into the next project you know right. so but right now I'm all in on Black Astronaut. I'm really happy to be here. Like it's it's really a dream. This is the thing like four, not even four, like eight years ago. Like I want to have a book one day. I want to have a book one, day. you know, and to be here talking with you right now, sharing it with, you know, your listeners or it's just or even just having moments with people and they saying, hey, I, I really liked your book. They don't know. And I'm like, You're, this is a part of my dream. And they don't. Yeah. They're like, this guy is dramatic. I'm like, no, you don't understand. <laughs> this is hard. this is hard work, man. It's not you don't just wake up and. You know, so I'm, I'm really thankful for all of this that's coming with it. And I really hope people check it out because mm -hmm. I think it's a very great reflective book and also and hopefully an inspiration, I hope, you know. Yeah. And if people wanted to see more of your work, where would you say that they could check it out? I think the best way is to just go to my website, I am Um, my Instagram, obviously, um, and definitely just purchase the book. That's uh, yeah, that's the whole <laughs> that's the whole me because I don't share everything. My best stuff isn't necessarily online. Um, I ha there's reasons for that. I have a whole ideology behind that. And um, so I think a way to really get a feel for my work is um, and the Quest Supreme isn't available anymore. 
So Black Astronaut, yeah, Amazon, search, search it. Um, the links are in my bio, on my Instagram. And it's so easy because if you just literally put Black Astronaut, like I come up within like the first five options, which is awesome. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, you'll see my book, me with the astronaut suit and a big uh, yellowish X, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. And I was really glad that I was able to meet you. Thanks for doing this today. Yeah, this was great. I really had a great time.